Okay. Who of you does know area games? No. Okay. Okay, two. So then I think I have prepared uh, uh, the right information. Um, I wanted to give you a short overview about uh, my CV. Uh, hi, please come in. Don't hesitate. Be our guest. Um, my name is Tung, and um, my background is uh, on the one side traditional media. I've worked for Bertelsmann and Grüne Jahr uh, in the magazine and book uh, division. I had a finance uh, um, traineeship at Hyper Finance Bank, which is now UniCredit. Uh, so the first uh, steps into internet and technologies I did with AOL. So I learned there how the internet works and how technology works. And 10 years ago, uh, I met a founder uh, who was the founder of Big Point, and he brought me into gaming. Uh, because be, uh, before that, I had no idea about what gaming was. Um, and since uh, the end of uh, 2012, I'm the CEO of um, ProSiebenSat1 Games, which is the subsidiary of ProSiebenSat1 uh, Media Group. Um, and as of um, spring this year, uh, we have acquired a game company called Area Games. I'm also their CEO, uh, co-heading the games activities of the group uh, together with my colleague Pascal Zuta. So, I would like to give you, let's say, uh, some sort of thinking because um, we have entered, if it comes to mobile, into phase number one. So, uh, do you know Wayne Kretzky? No? Okay. Do you know his famous quote? Also no. Okay, for all uh, of those who do not know Wayne Gretzky, Wayne Gretzky is Canadian, a very, very famous uh, ice hockey player, I think um, the century best uh, player, and he's famous for one quote. Uh, the first part of it, a good ice hockey player plays where the puck is. So what does that mean? We are in the mobile gaming industry, if it comes to mobile games, we want to be there where the puck is, meaning there where the business is. Uh, and later on uh, in these slides that uh, will follow, I will show you how we approached it from a, let's say, an analytical and structured uh, approach. But uh, before we come to that, and uh, I will close the circle at uh, the end of the presentation, um, I'd like to tell you something about uh, the mother company that I'm working for. It is ProSiebenSat1 uh, Media AG, and it's a TV station group. Um, it is a stock-listed company. Uh, we have um, around uh, 2.6 billion in revenues, euro. Uh, EBITDA uh, in the range of 800 million and uh, a nice EBITDA margin of 30% with a net income of 360 million euros. Um, uh, free float is around 90% and the market capitalization is around 7 billion. Um, stock listed, member of the MDAX and on the way to the DAX, which is the equivalent to the Dow Jones in America. Um, so a healthy company, pretty strong, and uh, the idea is also that uh, from the traditional um, TV media business, uh, we have three layers and that which we are active. The one is uh, TV broadcasting, so that's the traditional uh, layer where we have free-to-air television, uh, but also pay TV, which we distribute via cable companies uh, in Germany. And the area where we're really expanding is digital adjacent. So we know that TV is a more flattish business, uh, and uh, that is very healthy, it's very strong, we make a lot of uh, uh, profit there, but we need to transform the company more into digital space. Uh, so we have games, this is one thing, but we have also into digital, uh, digital entertainment, for example, video. We have uh, the German Netflix with Maxdome, but we also have travel clusters uh, uh, in the digital commerce, uh, and we also are uh, an active uh, investor in um, startups and growth companies. Uh, not so much in the early stage, but uh, more in the later stage. Um, phase uh, and they were quite uh, successful. Um, a broadcaster cannot live without content. So that's the reason why we have also in the third uh, layer uh, content production and global sales. That means that it's like Endemol. Who of you does know Endemol? Okay, that's even more. <laughs> um, so there we also have uh, a division that is responsible for buying and selling uh, content, TV shows, movies, um, not only for, uh, for our own TV broadcasting stations, uh, but also uh, for international um, stations uh, in the US, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, in the UK, for example. Okay, as I mentioned, um, we have done a bigger acquisition of this year. Um, for you, for your understanding, just to give you a short overview, the games business of Prozims at Eins um, evolved out of acquisition. We started uh, with a, a channeling department where we um, had uh, a department that was doing portal business, uh, but at a certain point, that was three years ago, the company, the group decided 
to go deeper into the value chain of gaming and bought uh, two companies. Um, and uh, Area Games was a so-called add-on acquisition, uh, which results now that uh, we are um, combined uh, a top free-to-play publisher uh, in Europe, uh, focusing on online games and PC games. Uh, together we have uh, a real powerful um, TV and marketing uh, background with an international ba uh, player base. And uh, the co combining the assets of those, co those two companies, uh, which means that we have on the one side access to TV, as a TV station natural, access to IP and brands. Uh, we have a high reach uh, if it comes to digital businesses. 20 million uh, people are online on a daily basis uh, within all our franchises uh, and area. Um, they were a really nice target for us to, uh, to acquire because um, we know the management, we know the people for a long, for a long time. And they have really proven to be um, excellent, really excellent in game as a service uh, uh, publishing processes. They really know to uh, run smooth game uh, publishing uh, on the online and on the uh, PC side, uh, online PC and on mobile. Uh, and what really um, stands out uh, with uh, in their competence is the, the, the monetization skills and tools that they have. Because uh, later on I can show you uh, how we have uh, implemented their knowledge in, uh, in a game project that uh, we have initiated uh, and how we have uh, moved uh, and how, how, we, how we have doubled, uh, for example, uh, monetization uh, in the KPI of ARPU. Um, so we bought the company uh, and uh, as of now we have completely um, integrated uh, the games uh, businesses uh, together. Um, so we have merged them and uh, all the games activities now are located in Berlin. Um, we have um, put everything together on one single technical platform. That's really a challenge, a challenge because if you come from two technical sides, uh, then you at one point need to decide which way to go uh, and then really move everything there uh, to uh, have it aligned. Um, right now, there are currently more than 300 people sitting uh, in the Berlin office and you have maybe a little view on the office. It's a really great, great uh, office location. Probably the nicest one you can find in Berlin. So if any one of you is, is coming to Berlin, uh, please come by, stop by and have a look. Uh, it's really phenomenal. It's close to the water. Uh, it has very high ceilings, probably as high as here. Uh, it's like a great, great, big, big, big loft and it creates really a very nice working atmosphere. Um, just recently in September, we have opened a, a rep office, a licensing office uh, in Seoul. Why? Because most of the games that we are publishing are coming from Asia, Japan, Korea, and, and China, for example. So to be close to the markets, close to the clients, close to the developer, we thought it is really important to be there, and that's the reason why we have now three men people sitting there. And uh, within the next couple of weeks, uh, we are planning to launch uh, further five to six games. Okay, so where are we coming from, be, uh, or to give you also an overview of um, uh, what have we do, been doing in the past and where are we heading to? Um, the DNA is PC, PC client base. And uh, from the audience side, uh, we have focusing in the past very much on hardcore, core, and mid-core games. Um, so you see on the, on the left side, for example, games like Mesia, games like uh, AVA. Um, so these are representative for the kind of games that we have or are doing, uh, still doing. Uh, shooter games, for example, or role-play games. Um, and these games proved to be quite successful because uh, they are whales-driven, so you have actually a, a smaller user base uh, compared to casual games, but really well monetizing and uh, in, kind, uh, in the case of these games, achieving nice ARPUs. Um, so if you want to go mobile, and that's the, uh, the, the way to go for us also, we do not want to leave out PC at all, but we see that there is now a heavy shift now in, in the media usage, but also in the game usage from uh, online to mobile. So for us, it's not the question uh, whether we want to be there, so we have to be there. So, so how can we do that, and how can we do it by leveraging the assets and the strengths that we have? Uh, so on the one side, uh, with Area, for example, uh, we have uh, really strong monetization skills. So we know uh, how to really uh, increase monetization within the games, how to uh, make the users come back, uh, so to increase the, the, the user retention, and thus also increasing or expanding the average user lifetime, which are phenomenal uh, in our games right now. Um, from the prosumer side, uh, naturally we have TV uh, and uh, the, uh, the access and the leverage potential to uh, do that with IPs and brands. 
Uh, and uh, because uh, on the TV side we have more like a casual and mid-core audience type of, of uh, um, a user group, uh, we are trying to go now, if we go into mobile, more into these uh, segments, which means that uh, at a certain point of time within the next uh, 12 to 18 months, you will see us probably also bringing out casual games like puzzle, match three games, for example. We will also go into social gambling space uh, because we see that also women are playing uh, casino type of games, but also poker. Uh, but for the first step, we thought it is probably best if we do not um, leave our DNA so far uh, and uh, try to find a game um, to focus on on the mobile side, um, which is on the one side mid-core, but also has a mass or casual appeal. So how did we do it? Um, last year, for really uh, a, a couple of weeks and months, we were analyzing the app stores. Um, probably, as most of you know, but for the board, uh, that when we presented that, it was a big surprise, because if you uh, analyze um, top grossing and top installs, you see that top grossing does not mirror top installs. Um, and as top installs uh, is not as important as top grossing, we were focusing on top grossing and analyzed these segments. What we found out was that 60 to 70% of top grossing apps are games. Really phenomenal. So that means that actually the main business in the app store is done with games. Um, when we anal analyzed deeper, we found out that uh, within this uh, uh, group or within the segment of games, it is strategy games uh, that are the most uh, 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 played and, and success success successful games, uh, like um, uh, Clash of Clans, for example, or, or Game of War. Um, so for us, we had to find a, a sweet spot uh, where we are not so much in a competitive environment because these guys like Supercell or Machine Zone or um, also King, for example, they have deep, deep pockets. They have a lot of money. Um, so it's a bit competitive to compete with them. So what we decided is try to find a route um, that is uh, maybe more comfortable for us. And what we, what we did is we found out that uh, within the App Store, there's only one sports manager game. And uh, because of my history, uh, I knew um, that it is actually not so complicated to develop a manager game. Uh, and uh, having uh, that was in 2013, the World Soccer Championships ahead of us, we decided to develop a mobile soccer manager. Simple as that. So how did we do it? We started December last year. Uh, and started development not internally because uh, we believe very much that um, development within uh, a group, a corporate environment uh, like we have is not very good. Uh, meaning that you lack speed, you do not really uh, get the focus, you get distracted. So what we did is we found a team in Hamburg, uh, the name of the company is Bad Monkey, and started development of the game. Um, the good thing about the team was that they already had a really good experience on the online side with uh, football manager games. Uh, so for us, the ratio, the rational was um, to go for a team that has experience uh, in manager games um, and better bet on that uh, instead of betting on a, let's say, experienced mobile team but not having uh, the experience or the knowledge on how to develop a, a manager game. Um, so we combined that uh, by uh, having a gather gathering a team of um, uh, people that have the experience um, and uh, started development for uh, iOS and Android. And what we did is we developed a game, uh, meaning that uh, the game looked in the beginning uh, like that, goal one. Um, but um, what we also thought and we uh, reflected that internally, we thought that it is a good game, it's a solid game. But would you be successful just with the name goal one? So we said no. Um, we thought that there must be some more differentiating, there must be a cutting edge or a competitive edge to make it more visible. So what we did, and that was actually also a lucky coincidence, we partnered with the DFB. The DFB is the German National uh, Football Association. Uh, and what we did is we licensed uh, the IP, which means that we licensed also uh, the German uh, soccer coach and also the team. Uh, and we were able to do that right before the World Soccer Championships. And on the day where the World Cup started, we launched the game. Um, and uh, though it was quite tight uh, in, in, in uh, concerning time, uh, we, were only to, we were only able to implement uh, 
a little set of features uh, of the German national team but uh, in, into the game. Uh, but we were able to do it uh, also by uh, bringing updates of the team, um, how successful they were, and uh, um, that resulted in um, a quarter million installs within the first days uh, in the German market because as of now, uh, the game is only uh, released in Germany and the international rollout will come uh, within the next weeks. So, what we did is, um, we also, as a TV station, we need a, we need a, a TV spot. Uh, so what we did is we prepared a spot uh, to push the game into the market uh, and combine that also with, let's say, a setting which is relaxing, it's close to the beach. Um, and we also included uh, a nice song from Marquez. Marquez is a German uh, musical, uh, music group uh, that uh, makes songs that have a very Spanish, a very relaxed flavor. And um, if you can, please, Show the video, you get a feeling on how this was. Neuer uh, Tag, neues Spiel. Goal one. Heute der Anruf von Joachim Löw und der Sprung in die deutsche Nationalmannschaft wird endlich wahr. Goal one. Der Fußballmanager. Unterstützt durch den DFB. Kostenlos im App Store und bei Google Play. So, that was the spot gives you a, a very southern feeling, you know, Spanish, Brazilian feeling, so that was probably also fitting in the environment of the World Cup back then. So how did this spot perform? I think uh, you would like to know um, on what impact uh, TV can have. And on the next slides, uh, I will show you that. Um, so uh, these are the curves um, that you can see where on the one side, um, GMV is cross-media volume, so that's the volume of TV that we have invested. Over the course of time, we have uh, the time frame from the um, first week of June until mid-September. Um, naturally, in around June, when the World Cup was, we really pushed the game into the market. Uh, so we were heavily uh, also uh, putting TV on air, uh, promoting the game. And you see that there's a really nice direct correlation uh, between uh, the uh, cross-media volume that we have invested and the installs that we uh, have uh, uh, received from that. Also, uh, one conclusion uh, that we have, uh, and that's maybe an interesting insight for you to share, is that uh, you, you can optimize. Um, so, over the course of a day, for example, if you um, put uh, TV uh, and air and promote a game, um, there are some uh, times where it's probably not so useful, uh, or where the, the impact is less. Uh, so, for example, uh, around noon, around dinner. So, the best um, time maybe is then uh, in the afternoon after lunch for example or after dinner they really can see that uh, the efficiency uh, of uh, the TV uh, uh, cross media vol volume invested in correlation to the installs is best within um, the areas where we where you can see the three arrows so how does that result um, so far we have more than 600,000 uh, 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 600, installs uh, this chart shows uh, half a million. Uh, the breakdown is that uh, over TV and social and viral uh, tools, we were able to get around 90% of the installs uh, via TV and the rest uh, via performance marketing. Uh, from a breakdown uh, in regard of the platforms, uh, we have around 40% iOS and 60% uh, Android. Um, and uh, that may, might change when we come out with the Windows mobile version, which will be probably beginning of next year. So what we did is then we intensively uh, analyzed uh, the, the first results of uh, the TV spot and also of the users uh, on how they were active and uh, how, were they, uh, uh, how was their payment behavior. And um, that's maybe something interesting. So in June, when we started the game, uh, the first focus was more on the first, uh, first time buyers. Uh, so uh, we took a look at that and analyzed that and uh, uh, also get the got, got the results on um, for which items, for which booster packages um, did uh, the payers uh, spend money? Is it more for moral? Is it more for stamina? Did they uh, were they active on the transfer market? Uh, and then decided uh, based on the analytics that we had uh, to rebalance the the, the booster ec uh, economy. Uh, we uh, defined new packages, uh, and later on in August and September we uh, introduced um, gambling features. Um, 
that have really uh, um, uh, made a big impact. It balanced, um, really nicely balanced um, 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 the, the payment uh, structure uh, that you can see in September, and it's even more balanced um, in uh, the next months um, right now. Uh, and that's probably uh, a very interesting thing uh, for you to see is that uh, in the beginning, uh, we try to uh, work with uh, different booster packages. Uh, so you can buy moral, package, uh, moral boosters, you, pay, you can buy stamina boosters, energy boosters, etc. And what we try to do is to package them in also different forms like a mystery box. So the mystery box is uh, uh, a feature that is also used maybe in, in some other uh, games that you know. Uh, so you buy something, you know that th there's a higher value, but you don't know really what exact items you get. Um, and we expanded that also by having other uh, gambling elements like the private scout. Uh, this is a mechanism where you uh, use the private scout uh, who is uh, buying, uh, you, uh, buying you a, a player, uh, which can be either a three-star player or five-star. A five-star is uh, the highest that you can get. Uh, so you know that at least the least uh, so sort of the the, uh, the the minimum quality you can get is a three star player, but there's a high chance that you get a player that has uh, even better um, performance uh, values. And with uh, these um, mechanism and tweaking on on uh, the model. Oh, what was that? Uh, so, uh, tweaking, uh, we were able to uh, increase uh, the, the KPIs, especially the daily ARPU and the monetization. And um, so she's checking now whether there's an attack uh, from the outside. <laughs> um, that is the path that we have uh, seen uh, the development uh, within uh, the top crossing app stores uh, at iOS. When we started in June, uh, we uh, first began with around uh, place. 30, 33, and slowly, steadily, within the last uh, weeks until now, we have moved to uh, number 10. And uh, probably uh, we will aim uh, at the end of this year or the beginning of next year will be something uh, between um, around top five, top 10. That's the goal, what we want to achieve. So what is the message or what is the conclusion? Um, you at first, you need to have a really good game that uh, needs to uh, monetize uh, and uh, has needs to also convince the players, has a great use experience. But that, does, uh, that alone does not really help, uh, in our opinion, or the case that we have uh, seen with this game. We have attached to it uh, a world-class IP with a German national team, leveraged that with uh, the power on, on the TV side that we had, uh, and combined it also with the monetization, which has led to uh, a great success, uh, which we I uh, want to expand further also into international territories. Uh, so for the next weeks we are going, uh, we, are, we will expand into Europe, uh, Asia and also the Americas. And um, yeah, so, so we have completed now the first phase because there are a couple of um, game projects that we follow in this pattern. Um, so we have a good hockey player plays where the puck is. So what is a great hockey player? Do you know? No? Just one? Who was it? Yes, right. So a great hockey player plays where the buck is going to be. So that would be the ideal situation and the goal for the next 12 to 18 months to find a game, to find a segment which has not so tapped before uh, to unfold more potential. Um, and that's what we are hoping for and working for. And uh, that's our goal. So thank you very much. And if you have further questions, please let me know. Thank you. I guess you guys have questions, right? I'm sure you have questions. Okay. What's your name? My name is Mikhail Bakker. I have a question about the value of the media campaign. I mean, I'm sure you benefit from intercompany pricing, but yep. if a third party had to acquire the kind of airtime you bought on your networks, what, what is the rough value that it would be? What, what do you mean by rough value? Well, the, the, the price a third party would have to pay to, to buy the oh, same promotional value on TV that you got for free. thing, because it depends on your negotiation power. <laughs> 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 no, I'm serious. I mean, if you buy direct, if you buy via, via media agencies, uh, it depends very much uh, on, on how you are able to buy the prices. But uh, uh, we have invested something between half a million to a million across media per month until now. Um, and... Um, that has worked so far. But if you break it down, for example, I mean, you can, you can also benchmark it. There are some people here in this room who can benchmark it with the prices they can get. 
And it comes very close to um, very competitive uh, CPIs that you buy in the market on the performance marketing side. So actually, this is a very good thing to do. Uh, I cannot really share the, the real numbers with you, as you can imagine. Um, but um, uh, having not only, let's say, a price level that you pay uh, compared to performance marketing, but also having the brand and va branding value and impact is a really nice thing to do. Great question. Um, I'm Netta from Big Point. Um, so, what do you think about the wear off of a campaign? Like, if you do, I would because I saw from the slide that the beginning campaign obviously had the biggest impact, and then it had a bit of wear off. What do you think the time, ideal time frame is for a campaign? Is it one, two, three months, and then you go lower, and then you make another one? Ooh, um, good question. Um, I think it's, you can maintain uh, the campaign level over uh, uh, a long time, actually. Uh, that what you have to uh, pay attention to is that you do not only use the one spot, but maybe have a variation of three to four spots uh, that you can, uh, on the one side, um, uh, exchange. Uh, this is one thing. And uh, recommendation is also that uh, you have uh, actual news to, uh, to combine with, or let's say lotteries or events uh, that you can trigger. Because if it's just a pure spot, uh, then it's, uh, there's definitely a wear out effect. Thanks. Anyone else? Please introduce yourself. Hi, um, I'm Benjamin. Um, just to know how, how can you know that uh, your app was downloaded um, about. Uh, 90% with the ad television and not with the, uh, not the, via the, um, via, uh, not via an organic download and okay, have to. Uh, okay, so you, uh, um, I understood your question that how do we know? Uh, why uh, can we with uh, a high certainty say that 90% comes from TV, right? Exactly. Okay. Okay, um, we, we cannot actually, <laughs> uh, but uh, we know that uh, also from experience with uh, other campaigns, with other games, that uh, TV has a really high impact. Uh, but what we did is that um, also to test it out, uh, during uh, the heavy promotion with TV, we did not do any performance marketing. Um, because usually what you do is you try to orchestrate uh, to um, have on one side performance marketing, um, then uh, TV and also SEO in, on the online side and all, uh, probably on the mobile side you try to go more into the app, uh, app store optimization. That's something what we did not do because we, on one side we had not really time to do it. Uh, and on the other side we also wanted to test the effects of it. That's the reason why we can say with a, let's say a, a good certainty that most of the install came from TV but also with the resulting spillover effects and, and uh, uh, branding and viral effects that TV has. And that's also what we uh, wanted to prove, uh, because what, what we did actually is that we had uh, um, intensively um, activity on, on Facebook, for example. Uh, we uh, posted achievements, we posted uh, new releases or features, for example, uh, and that together combined uh, resulted in 90% of the installs that we were thinking are coming from TV or initiated from TV. Thanks. Anyone else? Obviously not. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. That presentation is available for download if you follow this link. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.